Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hopkinton Town Election Results Show. Tom Nappy, Mike Terosian here, and the results of the town election will be revealed tonight. Uh, Mike, it's an exciting election once again. Five contested races, six questions on the ballot. Pretty big election this year. Yeah, you, you said that right. There's a lot of uh, electricity in this uh, election, and uh, good thing there was no electricity out there in that murderous row out there. Everyone would have been shocked and standing in all this rain. I mean, I got here probably about 7 o'clock this morning to take a drive by, and I see the same faces still here today. And they're finally getting warm. Everyone nice and warm? And you can talk about yourselves just because we're on, you know. You don't have to be super <laughs> quiet. But, yeah, we got a nice uh, cafeteria full of uh, people here uh, to, to wait to, uh, for Connor to come in and read those results. Well, it's uh, certainly exciting and uh, a, big, uh, a big amount of questions on the ballot this year, six questions. Uh, the first one uh, involves the Charter Amendment, uh, and then the second one uh, is about constables, and then you have one about... Uh, the medical marijuana dispensaries, question six, some yep. big topics. A lot of big topics, for the especially questions the, well, this the year. constable part. You know, a lot of the people said they want to keep these positions elected. They don't want to make uh, things appointed, and that was uh, part of the changes in the uh, charter. And that's why, if you look at that, the question again, and at the very end, clarification of the process. Um, uh, the, the no, cha no changes proposed in elections of any town official, and that was very loud and clear uh, amongst the people at all our other uh, broadcasts. And of course, five huge contested races this year. You got one for selectmen between John Catino and Damon Hadry. You also have a couple for uh, parks and recreation. You have the five-year race that is contested. There's two five-year spots available. And you have four candidates, Ken Wise, Mantle, Muriel Kramer, Amy Ritterbush, and Gary Trendle. And I believe we'll be talking to Gary in uh, just a moment. And also the one-year planning board seat is contested as well, Irfan Narsula and Al Rogers. So there is a lot of anxious Hopkinton voters sure. waiting to see the results sure, tonight. Yeah, waiting, you're probably at home watching us now, like everyone in the back is watching us. And we'll get a few of these uh, people up first. So... Um, but I'm going to let uh, Gary come on in and give us a little talk to and uh, you can go find the next rectum. Sounds good. Come on in. Hey, Mike. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> hey, Gary. <laughs> Gary, uh, long day for you today. Yeah, it's certainly a long day, but um, it's great. Just had so many people out supporting us and uh, I think um, great turnout. So really grateful for everybody that, that came out to vote and also that came out to support us. So this is your first time uh, running for any kind of uh, elected position? Uh, since I think the sixth grade, yes. <laughs> How'd you do back then? <laughs> uh, I didn't win. Okay. <laughs> All right. But you didn't give up and you waited till now to come out here and try again. Um, what was the process like as oh, far as the experience goes? You know, I, I think a couple of things really stood out to me, and, and, and um, this is what, what made it such a great process for me. Um, one is just makes you really appreciate um, all the volunteers in town and all the work that people put into it. And, and I was really blown away by um, just how many people reached out to me to help, how many people wanted to be involved. Um, and and uh, just all the people I've talked to has really been um, just, I feel like I've, I've, I've started to establish some great relationships with some people that are really passionate about our town. Speaking about relationships now, you're out there and what uh, all these old-time politicians like to call murderers row out there, but, you know, I, dr I drove through a few times today, and every time everyone's smiling, whether it was pouring out or the sun finally came out, everyone was out there having a good time. What was your time like out there? Uh, well, it's a tale of two stories. I mean, the, the morning it was, it was wet and cold, um, and then the wind came through, and then, it, and then it dried up and it got pretty nice. But, but again, I, I think that... You know, when you see people that wave back and people that smile at you, and, and uh, that's, that's fantastic. And I also think it's just it's nice to get to know some of the other candidates and people that are running and uh, some great conversations with, with a lot of people. So I, I actually enjoyed it. I'm, I'm tired. I'm looking forward to an yeah, sure. ice-cold beverage. But, um, you know, all in all, a good experience. Well, that's great. Yeah, and that's what it's all about because in the end, like it's always said, you're always going to be neighbors. Yep. You know, so Absolutely. you might as well do Tomorrow that. Tomorrow we're all still neighbors. Excellent. So, um now this is done and we get the results relaxation time you're gonna go right right to bed or you're gonna just say uh, hang out a little bit we're gonna see you out late tonight well i gotta pick up signs first because oh, um, yeah. i know that people don't always like having signs in the yard for a long time 
Um, and then, uh, I don't know, probably depends on the results. But uh, i got to go to work tomorrow, so... Um, so not no. too late. Not so we'll, we'll hopefully kind of get in here kind of fast. Yeah. I All think right. So. Fantastic. Well, thanks for spending right. the time thanks, with me. Mike. Thanks for your All support. Right. Thank All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, Tom, uh, who we got next over here? Well, <clears throat> over here we have a one-year planning board candidate, Irfan Nasrula. Irfan, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's been a long day. Oh, I'm sure. Have you uh, been around the, uh, the polls or holding up signs today? Sure have been. Uh, been out, got up pretty early this morning, out holding signs and uh, greeting people and waving. It's been, it's been a lot of fun, actually. I really enjoyed it. I think uh, it's been great meeting the community and having people come by and waving. It's been, it's been an enjoyable uh, experience. And how did the election go? Uh, I'm sure it took a lot of effort uh, by you uh, for this, uh, to run for this uh, one-year seat. How was the experience overall? Well, so this is the first time I've ever done it. So it was, it was certainly um, a learning experience. Uh, I think there's some things I could have done better, some things I could have, you know, that I think I did well with. Um, it, you know, it was an interesting experience. I think it was my favorite part was really getting to know my neighbors, getting to know the community, and um, just reinforcing what I really believe in in this town is that it's it's a great community of people and. Um, you know, we're, we have uh, party affiliations, but that didn't really seem to matter in this in this election. Everyone was was welcoming, and it was it was a great experience. And when exactly did you uh, decide to run for the planning board? Uh, how long ago did you say I'm I'm going to run uh, this year for the planning board? Well, uh, that's kind of been a, an evolving thing for me. Um, I've initially when I went to college came out thinking I want to get into politics at some point. Then I went to law school and said, well, okay, i got to pay this debt back, so I'll still be a lawyer. But it's always been in the back of my mind. So when I said, you know, when do I want to be a, uh, to run for office here, I would say it's when the results of the last election came in, and I said it's time for me to, uh, to step up and do my part and pay back to my community. And, of course, a couple of events you took part in was the Hopkinton Women's Club Meet the Candidates Night, and we also had the uh, planning board debate uh, hosted by the Hopkinton Independent and HCAM. How did you enjoy those two events? Those were great. Um, again, it was, it was wonderful to just meet the other candidates. And, you know, it's one thing when you're uh, presenting something before the planning board or going to a town meeting and seeing these, you know, seeing these people. But when you're up close and personal and you realize they're still our neighbors, they're, and, and they're just like you and I. Um, they want what's best for the town, and it was, it was a fabulous opportunity to get to meet everyone and to get to caucus with, uh, with the party. Have you been able to get a sneak peek uh, of the res early results yet? Not yet, not yet. Just uh, waiting with bated breath. <laughs> Are you a little nervous? Uh, yeah, I guess that's a good way to put it. <laughs> it would be hard to say I wasn't. Uh, I'd be lying if I didn't. So at least I'm honest, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that was Irfan Nasrula, the uh, planning board candidate for the one-year seat. As I'll uh, head back over to talk with uh, Mike Terosian. Hey. And uh, Mike, you're actually uh, going to bring up another guest uh, shortly, I believe. Yeah, I got uh, Frank Durso uh, coming up and uh, get a little perspective on the whole how the day's been from, uh, from a veteran, from being out in that line every year. Excellent. And I understand you were around town this weekend. Uh, could you talk about what it was like? I know there was a lot of people holding up signs. I tell you, there was a lot of signs downtown, like, like they always are. I mean, they, they, it, but as soon as 12 o'clock comes, boom. They all disappear. They're gone. I don't know what the lunch plans are, but they're, they're out the door. But, yeah, it, it's fun. It's nice seeing how uh, the families come out and support them and, and just all the neighbors being neighbors. And, you know, yeah, granted, we're a partisan town and everything, but you, you can't tell by the corners. You know, right. they're not throwing rocks at each other like they used to. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll let you... I mean, uh, throw rocks at me, right. say, not at each other. Well, know? I don't blame them for throwing them yeah, at you. Nobody but. does. So, <laughs> so I get these good looks. Well, I'll let you talk with uh, Constable yeah. Candidate Frank Deere. So. Oh, yeah. Hi. Come on, Frank. So another day. This uh, How many times you've been out there? Oh, I've been uh, how many? out there in Sign Alley for decades now. Yeah. Um, is this that, is my what, what, was your, what was your take on the whole day? How, how did it feel? What was the electricity like? Or what? Well, I, I was inside for a lot of the day getting some work done, but uh, by the time I came out, the sun was starting to shine. Uh, I think a lot of the candidates were out there uh, from early in the morning, and I'd really admire them for that. Uh, I know the Republican side and uh, the Democrat side were 
were uh, hunkered down, and cool. they were. Uh, I always enjoy people's company out there, and uh, so I'm sorry I missed a lot of it, but. When I was out there, it was a beautiful day. and You know, work does get in the way of all the fun stuff. Yeah. That's like everything we do. Um, so not, I haven't talked to anyone about the questions yet. Um, has there been any talk uh, or feeling uh, amongst people that you talk to what they thought about these questions, especially like the elected positions? Well, the questions, and the six of them were very quiet. Usually we'll see maybe a couple signs saying yes or no on different right. things. Uh, but I think we're so united. Uh, a lot of the good work that Pam Wexlax yeah. way up into hey, work. Pam. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about you. Uh, they did a lot of good work on the Charter uh, sure. Commission and uh, as a town we worked out what we want our charter to be and uh, so I think everyone was pretty much unanimously uh, for the charter uh, vote. Uh, article question sure. and then uh, the second one was about constables and uh, something we had uh, shot down at town meeting uh, we wanted to keep our elected constables so I think that question is moot for today on the ballot uh, but you never know so hopefully people still voted no uh, yeah, they, hopefully they remembered what they were voting on correct but um, I, I have to feel that with the information the way that it's been put out there for everything that People were really informed this year when it came to knowing their candidates and, and knowing their questions. I think a large part of that, uh, we had the Women's Club, we had a lot of uh, HCAM, yeah. uh, our, our, our fourth estate sitting over here. Oh, sure. yeah, uh, they all do a pretty good job. Yeah. Uh, but this year we had a, a lot of additional candidates. So uh, The Democrats fielded 19 candidates for positions this year. Um, there was more contested races than there has been previously. There's a contested planning board race. As I'm on the planning That's board. Right. It was yeah. good to see. Yeah. Last time there was a contested race, I lost. It you was lost. 2010. Yeah. It was my first yeah. time running. And um, I want to say the candidates that ran tonight, it was their first time. If they didn't make it, come back, try again. Uh, it's definitely uh, an experience, and you build on that. Right. And um, I see candidates out there like Claire Wright, who's on a board of selectmen, who also uh, double elected. She's on a cemetery commission. Uh, waving high. And uh, I think that um, uh, I don't want to say all Democrats, Democrat, Democrats, right. but I think that with all the new blood coming in, right. uh, I think it brought a lot of new energy to, to what's going on. So we have a, a contested selectmen's race this year. It's been a couple of years since that's happened. Well, actually, it was contested, but before that, right. uh, I was one of the last ones to uh, run against Brian Hur. Um, so it's good that uh, we have contested races. We could, it's good that we have people that want to be involved. Right. And it's good that people are out there holding signs and saying what they think about issues. And um, I do want to mention one more of the issues that are on the ballot, yep. which is the marijuana. Uh, the way it's written, it gives the town the ability to control the, what they want the laws to be about marijuana, recreational mar marijuana. But that's really different than what we voted on at town meeting, so I was a little bit concerned about the, the wording of that. So that's the only article I really yeah. hope fails. Um, this well, we're we're going to find out real soon because, yeah. uh, you know, I was just in and checking on Connor and the crew. They have just about all the polling tables all packed up, and I see the ribbons flying out and the printouts are coming, so I think we're going to see him real soon. But thanks for taking the time, and, you know, I look forward to uh, uh, hearing uh, what, what the future lies for this town with well, all the new candidates that yeah. people filled out and worked hard to uh, at least three new planning it. board members, and there will be an interesting uh, new board. Uh, yeah. There will be at least one woman, uh, hopefully three new ones. Uh, but it's... Uh, Hey. Oh, yeah. Always got to get the pictures. So All right, well, thanks uh, again, Frank. Interesting times. All right, great. All right, well, that was Frank Durso running for a constable, the sole position, and we're going to go back to Tom. Who you got over there, Tom? Thanks, Mike. We have a uh, board of selectmen candidate, Juan Hadrian. Juan, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> thanks. And I understand it's been a, uh, a long campaign trail, and uh, you mentioned you're a little bit tired today, and I know you've been putting a lot of work into your campaign. Uh, can you talk about uh, the process and how your first campaign running for town government went? You know, um, the process has been great. I mean, today, uh, let me start by today. Today was uh, a long day, I know, for all the candidates. It was a lot of energy I saw, a great turnout. And uh, But I think if I go back four or five weeks, it's been a great experience. I mean, the people that I've met, people who have that came out and supported not only all the other candidates, 
and um, it's been a, it's just been a, a great great experience. I mean, winning, losing, that's something else. But I think generally the whole experience was uh, uh, was very inviting, and uh, it it was an eye opening. And there were a lot of other new candidates who uh, who ran, and I think I can speak on their behalf too that it was just a great great experience. Yeah. Can you talk about your day today? I'm sure you've been up uh, pretty early. Yeah, you know, I, I did. I didn't really expect this. I mean, I was I was here at probably 7:15 in the morning, and it was uh, you know it's a lot of rain. And, but I'm just you know I'm really uh, honored to to be with the, with all the other candidates out there. I mean, they were at their six o'clock in the morning putting all the uh, signs out. But you know that really shows the uh, what Hopkinton's all about. I mean, everyone is so dedicated. They want to go there. They want to vote, and they want to show the commitment. No matter you know which whichever candidates they're voting for but it's the commitment and this is what makes I mean um, uh, Hopton great and I believe I, I don't know how official it is but it, there is a uh, uh, it was a good turnout uh, today and people still took time out in the rain to come and vote and that's what mattered the most so uh, I'm very excited I mean uh, I don't know which way this is going to go but uh, you know I met a lot of uh, uh, people I made some new friends today too but uh, you know apart from just being exhausted I think I really really enjoyed today well, Amon, we wish you the best of luck, and thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much for your opportunity. Thanks. <laughs> All right. That was Amon Hadri, Board of Selectmen candidate. Of course, he is uh, running against John Cotino, who is up for re-election. So it should uh, certainly be an interesting race for the Board of Selectmen. And I think this is one of the few town elections that no one really knows how it's going to go. Uh, there's a lot of suspense. Uh, I don't think... Uh, really anyone sure of who's going to win this year and uh, Mike I was just talking about to Amon Hadri and the Board of Selectmen race is uh, one of the five contested races and I was just mentioning that I think this is one of the years that no one really knows how the election is going to go the suspense is building and it's a tough one to predict yeah, there's no real like a standout as far as well I'm not going to say standout candidate there was there was really hasn't been the buzz that you would hear about oh yeah this one's got it this one's got it right you know you hear that all the time they hear it with this one here because it just seemed like it, it didn't have that kind of tension uh, uh, amongst the, the whole race and this is one of the most contested races I've seen in a long time you know, normally you might have three people for two seats on a selectman, or you might have one person, uh, one seat, uh, two playing book candidates, something like that, school committee, whatever. It, it was like uh, five. How could you right. go wrong? Yep. So, all right, I'm going to give you a little break. And I found Mina over here, Marina Perron, who was uh, running for the one of two seats on the uh, school committee. Come on in. How you doing? Very well. Very well? Very excited. Very excited. This, this is the first time you ever run for anything? Um, yes, I think uh, so. Yes. 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 And, uh, any other volunteering uh, that you do? Yes, of course. Um, I volunteer at the senior center. Yeah. As you know, I'm a greeter there. I love uh, I that question. Oh, sure. <laughs> and um, also, I volunteer as a math tutor at the Framingham Public Library. And besides that, you know, as and when they have needed volunteers at my son's school, you know, whether it be a book fair or um, calling, um, you know, uh, when they had the kindergartners come in, sure. or um, you know, just anything at all. Always doing something. I'm happy to do that. Any any opportunity I've got and been able to make it, I've, I've done that. Oh, that's fantastic! So, and of course, you ran for one of two seats. Yes. So it was nice not going up against anybody the first time. And you know, I just spoke to Frank Durso, and he mentioned how hard it was for him. It was his first time running, and he didn't win. You know, and you actually come in a little bit easier. What was what, what was the experience still like for you uh, during this event? Um, this has been a you know amazing journey for me. I will say that um, you know I first and foremost focused on the work that was required for the school committee. I was not super familiar with the process, uh, but as I got into it, I realized what it entails, and uh, there was a lot of anxiety within me. There was some nervousness, but I had so much support. Uh, I cannot tell you how much support I have gotten from the town, um, and you know people from all walks, the senior center. My goodness, you know, the love and support I've gotten, I'm so grateful. 
and um, Jean Butchman on the school committee. I mean, I had plenty of questions for her. Claire Wright, she helped me, and so many, so many other people. I mean, I, I spoke with um, Norman Kamalo. You sure. know, just to sure. understand everybody's views, Ellen Scordino, um, you know, some names are failing my mind. But well, that, That's one of the things that I re love about this town so much is how, you know, you're all volunteers. Yeah, you're you're competing for a position, but you know, uh, you don't get it. More likely, you're going to do something else. That's right, and and I must also say that, you know, it didn't. I mean, of course, I'm running unaffiliated, but everybody, I I didn't see, you know, the partisan thing. Everybody right. knows we all want the same things. Right. For you know, from a school committee perspective, I can say we all want the same things for our kids, for our town. Nobody wants taxes to go up, you know. Um, so I think we all want the same thing. Right. Yes, there are a few differences, but so we can now, figure it out. Did, did you spend any uh, time out there on, on the uh, Solden signs? Um, no, I'm guilty. Uh, but I, um, you know, in fact, I felt that like this morning it was raining crazy, oh, yeah. and I saw everybody standing in the cold. Um, so I felt a bit guilty, and I did a little <laughs> service uh, for them. There you go. Um, I came. I, I, I don't think I should. Uh, talk about that, but I did go and say hello to them. That's good. The folks oh, that, that, well, that's outstanding. And the only reason I ask that question every year because I, I get a lot of different answers, but the biggest answer that I get is how much everyone comes together. They, you know, different parties, different, yes. different. Um, well, the other person we're running against or whatever. You know, like it's been said many, many times over at the. Uh, uh, Tom Moderate, we're all neighbors. We're all neighbors from down. It, it is so true. It is so true. Like I said, so many people have given me advice and guidance. I would not be able to even imagine, you, you know, that I would be here. This is beyond my imagination. Sure. Sure. Uh, you know, I lost my father last year. If he was here, he'd be so proud that here I am in America and running for public office. Uh, um, that'd be amazing. Yeah. I'm sure he's looking above and shining down on you so yes. good luck thank with you everything much. and thank you're you. gonna do great on the school committee I I'm sure so I hope so and also we have a, another you know great person running for school committee Jen Devlin yes. she's amazing I've had a chance to connect with her and I'm really looking forward to working with her I mean we have big shoes to fill Laurie Nickerson oh, and Kelly Knight yeah. um, and you know I'm very excited we have a very great group of people already on the board much to learn yeah. much to do very excited the work has only just begun thank Mina you thank you very much so now uh, now we wait for Tom it looks like Tom is uh, coming up with Claire Wright who's running for the um, cemetery commissioner uh, position that she already holds and a uh, position that she uh, loves very well and we're waiting for Connor Dignan to come in to give us the official uh, results of the uh, well, they're unofficial results, and one of the things I want to explain to people is the numbers that he gets today is from his machines. The numbers then have to be uh, certified and approved uh, at the state legislature. So I wait for Tom as Tom is uh, over there having himself a good time, making me sweat and talk to myself. Does this to me all the time, and uh, so I think he'll be coming over, and then we can talk a little bit more about. Uh, these questions. So we're hoping um, that we can also hear from uh, selectman candidate John Catino uh, after the results are in. I think he said he will uh, come and speak to us. And so as Tom slowly makes his way over here, as I babble and babble. Sorry about babble. that, Mike. I was just chit chatting. Yeah, with, I know. Uh, this is just chit chatting. Yeah, that's okay. some of the people around. Uh, yeah, yeah. You find out anything good over there during this chit chat? Uh, n nothing great. It was really uh, not related to the election for oh, the most so. part. <laughs> so, of course not. So, again, with the, uh, go back to the uh, questions here. We, we're we talking about having a, oh, yeah, what happened to that? Yeah, nice, uh, there we go. Oh, there we go. That looks a little bit better. But on the, the question one, again, to prove the charter as amended. And uh, this is huge. I mean, every 10 years we have to go through this process. And there was a ton of language that was in there, as we learned from hosting several um, uh, charter uh, forums, that a lot of it was language. And you know, a lot of people w were hung up on the language, figuring, oh, it's fine the way it is. And well, it really wasn't. The lawyers are the ones that says it's no good. The state who has to approve it says it's no good. So 
need to be changed. But one thing that the uh, Chatter Committee Review Committee heard loud and clear is that they wanted to keep the uh, clerk elected position. They did not want to make it appointed. So that was very clear. And that's why it specifically, it, you know, it tells all the things, oh, it does this, it does this, it does this. But no change is proposed for, to the elected election of any town official. Right. That's big. Yeah. In question two, again, town meeting said very clear, we want our constables elected. But because it was already on the ballot, it has to stay on the ballot. Right. What happens if it gets passed, people forget how to vote on it. I don't see that being an issue, but it, it could still happen. Uh, question three, uh, required to reduce the real estate and personal tax. Everyone loves that. Sure, let's let's uh, reduce taxes. Question four, um, that's going to be hard because that, that's still up in the air, the pedestrian safety question. Right. A lot of that, you know, they got traffic coming out here uh, by the middle of high school, but they also want the pedestrian traffic, you know, more sidewalks, maybe another street light here and there. So a lot of people feel that the calming measures are not in line with the pedestrian measures that they want to study. So again, you got a couple groups working, they're trying to get it all done at one time, and preferably when the new school goes online, the Marathon Elementary School. Yep. So, so as we sit here in wait, you get anybody lined up? Anybody want to talk to you? Oh uh, no! Oh, there oh, we go. I think Come we got on. someone over here. It's your turn because I need the break. I need a whistle. whistle. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. All right. Uh, so Jen Devlin is uh, with us. You're running for school committee. Uh, can you talk about uh, what made you want to run for school committee? Um, well, I wasn't really excited about the results of the election this fall, so I, I looked into what I might be able to do to actually take some action in response to my sort of not-so-awesome feelings about this fall, and I am a teacher and um, have a sort of long-standing interest in lots of grad school and lots of experience in education, so I figured school committee was a good fit. Excellent. And how was your day today? Uh, was, was it a long day? Were you out there holding up signs? Or? My day was pretty easy. My race was uncontested, which was something I was incredibly grateful for because I just, the, the idea of what some of these folks did today is just, they put in an insane amount of time and effort today. And, and I went to work and then came back here after work and was able to stand outside for a little while with them. So, I mean, my day was nothing compared to what some of these folks have gone through. But yeah, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for that. Yeah, yeah a couple of the uncontested. Uh, contested candidates you know they're pretty awake and they they have uh, a good amount of energy yeah. but the, the ones that contested it. races they seem like they're almost uh, ready to take a nap you can tell the difference <laughs> it's pretty obvious right yeah no I know I'm very grateful for the uncontested race but I'm very excited to get started so tomorrow tomorrow and since you're uncontested, what brings you here to hear the results? Is it just uh, to support? Yeah, yeah, just to support. I got a lot of support from the Democratic Committee just in general with information, things that I'm a rookie. I, I didn't realize lots of things that, you know, financial reports and things like that that I didn't even realize I had to do, and they were really helpful. So I just wanted to, to come down and, and see how the rest of the results planned, you know, played out. And also I, I want to know what's going to happen as, as the town sort of moves forward after this election. So that's why I'm here. And is there anything that uh, you specifically uh, look forward to accomplish while you're uh, with the school committee? Well, I think the school committees, they're, they're obviously already moving in a great direction. The schools are awesome here. Um, but I think the next big thing will be figuring out what to do with the increasing student body, student population size, and, and trying to figure out how to ac accommodate the, the increasing number of kids with Elmwood and Hopkins, and, you know, the classrooms are getting tighter and tighter as the population's getting bigger and bigger, so that's what, what I think, I suspect anyway, will be on the horizon for us, yeah. Yeah, and you said you're a teacher, so have you seen this? Have you seen the classrooms getting bigger and bigger? I have. I don't teach in, in Hopkinton, but it is. It's, and it makes a big difference. Even just two or three more kids in every classroom makes a huge difference in how much you can interact with each kid and how the connections you make with the kids. It makes it Just those couple extra kids makes a huge difference. So so we got to definitely make some hard decisions and figure out what we're going to do, I think, in the coming years. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, best of luck to you, and we look forward to uh, seeing you on the school committee. Thank you. Great talking with you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right, that was uh, Jen, Jennifer Devlin, a school committee candidate. Uh, she is uncontested. There's two available spots on the school committee, and there's two candidates, so both of them will 
get in. And in fact, we heard from uh, both of the school committee candidates today as well. And uh, a good amount of uh, people gathered here in the middle school cafeteria just awaiting the results. And from what I've seen, there was a big turnout today. The parking lot was packed. I drove by the school several times and saw an absolutely parked, uh, excuse me, an absolutely packed parking lot. Uh, so I think the voter turnout uh, must have been uh, pretty tremendous. Uh, so I'm sure the ballot counting process is taking uh, longer than maybe in the uh, past couple years. But it's going to be very interesting to see what the numbers were as far as the turnout, because I don't know if I've ever seen this parking lot this packed uh, for a town election. So it was pretty impressive. So the voters definitely, uh, one way or the other, got out there today and cast their ballot. And how could you not? Six important questions on the ballot. And of course, you have five contested races so they uh, they certainly had a lot to vote on and uh, I'm sure a lot of research was done by the voters as well with all these uh, questions and of course the five contested races but we are waiting for the town election results and right now I think uh, we might uh, be taking a little break, but actually Mike Terosian is going to join me uh, right now. Mike, any uh, new information? Well, I just had a little nap. Uh, no, no. I was uh, out there <laughs> seeing if I could uh, get uh, the town clerk's uh, attention to see if I get a look at some of the final numbers, some of the voting numbers. Uh, right now I'm hearing roughly something like 2,900 uh, voters, which, you know, for 11,000. That's uh, you that's do, pretty good. You do that, yeah. That's, well, that's so good. what almost thirty three percent, something like yeah, that. In your lifetime, maybe, but no, <laughs> that's like five. No, that's uh, that's uh, let's see, ten thousand. It's like twenty percent. Oh, okay. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I was oh, getting more than 20%. Well, a little bit nervous in the morning as we were getting uh, calls. You know, there was uh, only like three hundred by you know nine ten o'clock in the morning, but who wanted to come out in the rain? And a lot of people were at work. But all the big numbers came, you know, from 4 p.m. to closing. Well, I drove by a couple times around 2, 3 o'clock, and the parking lot was absolutely packed. So I think a good amount of voters were coming in the uh, late afternoon. Yeah, well, with, without doubt, the numbers did get bigger. But uh, yeah, I was trying to get the Did the you get any numbers. results to sneak peek at you anything? Know, I, I tried, and uh, Officer Powell was there. He put the brakes on me, and uh, after talking to him for five minutes, he took the cuffs off, and... Uh, <laughs> He let me come back out. That was why I was delayed, was because uh, Officer Powers, he, he runs a tight ship. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're in his school right now, and uh, but he is on for the detail for the election. We have, um, uh, it looked like there was just one table left of counters, and I'm sure they're just uh, pulling together all the um, write-ins, because all the write-ins don't only have to be counted, uh, but they have to be categorized, you know, who, whose name is who, and, you know, like, 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 I would write your name down right. in one, and, you know, they got to look for other Tom Nappies. There could be another one, you know. Um, so I'm sure they're doing all that sorting. And um, then Connor Deegan will come out and read the actual results, and I think he's just going with the totals, and we will... Uh, well, and I, and I think out. part of that is, uh, part of why it's taken a while this year is the fact that there was six questions, so they still got to count all those ballots as well for each question. Sure. Yeah. So... And, you know, and who, who knows which way it's going to go, you know, uh, you'd be surprised. Like, you, you would think that the constable thing's a no-brainer. Yeah, it has to stay on the on the ballot because it's already registered, but it failed at town meeting. Let's see if it fails uh, at, uh, at town election. Right. Who knows? But we're going to... Uh, we're going to wait and find out. I mean, there's some candidates out by the door. I mean, I had to get through a pack of five people that had that thing blocked just uh, waiting there. And uh, uh, a couple of candidates and a uh, couple of press. So we will uh, soon see. And, you know, I kind of wish I, I may have played ahead and maybe brought some rolling footage uh, <laughs> today. But instead, we're going to be talking about it. So while we take this time, let's... Uh, First off, the Celtics are up by four right now. For oh, the people are watching good, this, good. I'm sure you switch it back and forth. I know. Um, but no, well, obviously they have this on, and then they'll go to the yeah, Celtics. Yeah. Or, or they'll watch the replay of uh, the Hillers. I mean, I'm, I'm sure in uh, Hopkinton, it's the town election results and the Celtics in second. You think somewhere around I there? I think so, yeah. yeah you, you, how long have you worked in this town? <laughs> obviously you don't know. Okay, so... Um, 
what do we got going on in the sports department? Well, okay, let's change it up a little bit. Well, uh, it's been a very good spring sports season for the Hillers. Uh, the baseball and softball team are just miraculous this year, and they both have a chance uh, to really make a nice postseason push. Uh, the baseball team had some kinks last week. They had a couple of losses, but there's a lot of talent on that team. Sure. And if they can get the hitting going, uh, they'll certainly get some Ws. Their pitching is a lot better than it was last year. Last year they were very limited on starters. This year they have three or four reliable arms they could uh, go to. Uh, so it's a much more deeper team than it was last year. But it's, it's been a great spring season because you got the girls lacrosse team that is uh, very good. The girls lacrosse is outstanding. The boys yeah. lacrosse team is maybe one of the best in the state. Yep. And then you got the girls track team, which is, once again, again. one of the best in the again. state. Yep. The boys track team is very good as well this year. So I think we're going to see a lot of postseason play come, uh, come June. Absolutely. And speaking of track, uh, at Bellingham High School, I'll be heading over to the TVL uh, track uh, tournament the TVL oh, yes. tournament, yep. so there'll be a lot of uh, Hopkinton participants in that, as well as, of course, as uh, their other TVL uh, TVL competitors. So it should be sure. a uh, fun event over at Bellingham High School. I haven't been to one before, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what yeah. it's all about. Yeah, I hear that a lot of fun. Um, well, we just finished up. We just finished up prom on Friday. Uh, they had 420 kids participate. They um, did their grand march that we filmed and went out live. Um, which is now replaying on our YouTube channel, or uh, or you can go to HKMed to the specials page on our uh, programs. The uh, hour-long event, but a his tradition here. I, I put a picture up and I put it through uh, the uh, old Hopkins uh, Facebook groups and brought up some good little discussion. They says, "Oh yeah, I graduated in 1986." And uh, when I went to my prom, it was just in, in the gymnasium. We danced and went home. You know, it was right. it was as elaborate as, uh, as an event that they make it today. But the Grand March, and still a few towns uh, do have a, some form of Grand March. In the town of Ashland, they also do a dance. The couples practice this dance routine at the Grand yeah. March. I feel like every school has their little traditions uh, for traditions. prom. There's yep. always something different about every school. I mean, in Milford, it was pretty basic. It's We had a junior prom and a senior prom. Sure. But there was no grand march or anything like that. You would pretty much just go to prom and right. have fun. <laughs> Mine, back in the old days of uh, 1984, senior prom, uh, we had a dance at the gym. It was set up like Camelot. And the couples were announced one at a time as you came in. And... We were there for a couple hours, and then we drove to Chelsea to our, uh, can't remember the function room, but it was a big function room, big, huge Lombardis, big function room, and uh, they cut you loose around 1 o'clock in the morning. Wow. So we go up to Nahant, to 29 Steps, watch the sun rise, and then we go to Denny's for breakfast. Oh. There you go. You know, all these kind of little traditions. But, yeah, things change. You know, now they have the after-prom parties. They keep the kids Yeah, we had an after-prom party safe. until, like, 5 in the morning. They had games, food, all kinds of stuff. So the kids kids are much safer today, and, uh, um, and, and they got to do more fun stuff. I'd rather be at that. I mean, I help them set up every year at the after-prom. Right. And uh, the stuff they got lined up from. This year it was uh, it was uh, casino night, you know, so they had all Did you games. test all the games to make sure they were working, play a little blackjack uh, while you were blackjack, there? The blackjack, yeah, yeah. I, I was down 40 after the first hour, but I was, <laughs> I was doing okay. Um, so that's all done. That's in the books, and now the kids are taking their final AP test, and then uh, they're off um, to senior recognition and graduation. June 1st, 7 p.m., we'll be live on HKM Ed. Um, with the Senior Award Recognition Night. And then the Class of 2017 uh, Commencement Ceremony will be Friday, June 2nd, um, 6 p.m., live on HQ. So, All kinds yeah. of fun stuff coming fun up. Stuff. Oh, then we get the Step Up Night, which is the 8th grade graduation here, uh, which will go out live on June 20th, uh, I believe 6.30. Don't hold me on that one. Check the program guide for times and listings near you. And, of course, you can find all that on our website, hkm.tv. Yep. And we put it out on our Facebook page. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash hkmtv. Twitter. We haven't done the yep. Instagram thing. I don't get Instagram. 
It's just pictures, right? Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty Twitter much? without words, essentially. Twitter without words. <laughs> Twitter has words and pictures. Facebook words and pictures. Why would I? I don't know. People use it, I guess. Uh, you can see all our shows on our YouTube channel, hkm.tv. Yep. Uh, YouTube. Uh, what else we got going on? <laughs> we got to fill this time as we look. Well, uh, here's a another sports note. Uh, Hiller's baseball that uh, they have officially added the Ashland makeup game to Thursday. That so is a home Thursday. game for Hiller's baseball. We will be there. I won't be there. Um, You'll be there. Well, I'll be there with okay. uh, Bob Hamilton, our cameraman, yep. and. Uh, my uh, broadcast partner for baseball, Larry Sacklad. Yep. So we'll be bringing you that game. Should be a great TVL battle between Hillers and Ashland, two teams that are most likely going to go to the playoffs. Crazy uh, schedule. That's a crucial game Thursday. Cra- crazy schedule. It should get in. It's going to be Sunday at 90. So right. I, I great think, day for I don't baseball. Think, yeah. I'm sure that's why they picked Thursday. Yeah, that must have been. But you have a uh, crazy schedule with the games. They're playing a lot of back-to-back stuff, which in baseball, it really wreaks havoc with your pitching rotation but uh softball yeah no softball's so softball's worse when you go back to back because usually the softball has one pitcher yeah right but usually but the mechanics are different right so they are but in baseball you at least have a couple arms you can go to so i don't right. think it takes too much of a toll unless right. you get clobbered in the first game and you have to go to your bullpen early on that's and then true. you have the second game. Yeah. That's where it could hurt you. But right. softball, I think it's more difficult to have uh, your starter throw 14 innings uh, because that's certainly not easy. And all the softball doubleheaders that I've seen, Hopkinton actually hasn't had any, but all the one, all the scores that I've seen from across the TVL, it's it's been it's been uh, and the doubleheaders. One of the teams always has big problems defensively. They always right. give up a lot right. of runs. Yeah. So, and I think it's just because they have to use the same pitcher, really. Yeah, and I, uh, to be honest with you too, I don't believe in double headers at the high school level, anyways. But I do like them sometimes, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, I mean, yeah. The fight. Well, you're not playing them, right? Right. You know, yeah, it's not I like up to you. Them. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think the players mind really. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they have a blast out there and and a nice weekend double header you know there's something to that but i do agree that they should definitely get a few days off before or after uh, that double header it sure. shouldn't be crammed into a week where you have three other games as well well i i like the uh, baseball uh double headers when we had tournament play uh in, in summer ball we would have you know maybe a game at 10 and maybe another one at four those i could handle a lot better same thing with softball when you're you're at a uh, at a facility all weekend. You know, you play two games Saturday, two games Sunday, or three games whatever. Right. That I didn't mind so much. But when you go at the high school level and you go back to back games, and you get that one pitcher, it's not good. Not yeah, good. absolutely. Yep, you got to have deep pitching for those double headers, or uh, you're you're gonna have a rough time. That's for sure. But it, this weather has been nuts for the for the spring season. Weather, it's just it's, it's rain, awful. rain, rain. It's awful, and this is again another reason why they're pushing for these artificial fields and it's to get these games in a lot of these games can be played but the field conditions are just so bad our field conditions here in the baseball it's it's the bottom field all the water runs down there so yeah it doesn't doesn't do very well but still you could play in a certain amount of rain in baseball on artificial field right but on these fields here you can't play that type of baseball so I'm hoping something happens. I hate to see. Um, I mean, I'm looking at the, the plans. Uh, you know, I hate I hate to see the, the fields get destroyed because they're beautiful fields. Yes. It's just they're terrible in the spring. Oh, but there's been so many great games on them. So, yeah, it'll certainly of great be games. tough to. A lot of great games. You know, my field I want to see goes the the football field. Right. That's just, you know, you stand on that sidelines. You you can see the waste up on the other team. It's there's so such a big crown in the thing. Now I wonder and, where they'll be playing while they're renovating that because I'm guessing it'll take more than a year. It, well, no, they could do it. They could do it over the the school summer. However, any real field, I believe, is gonna, I believe, is gonna incorporate a new track. Right. So they're gonna just rip it up right, get it done. But if they do that too, that they're, they're talking a new retaining wall out further, uh, big money. So we, we don't see it happening anytime soon. Right. And Hopkins is the last town in the TVL to have, not have an official field. 
Mike Tarosian, Tom Nappy, live on HCAM while we wait for well, the we uh, wait. town election yeah. results. It, it didn't change over. I think of the uh, the lower third does say election results. That's right. So that's you, right. you know this. That's why we're talking baseball is because. There's only a few candidates that are here, a few stakeholders, and, and uh, they were nice enough to talk to us, and we could only stretch so much time with that. Um, and we couldn't get any election information early like we normally do. Usually they give us a, a tape and um, you know, tells us the number of voters and, and right. basic, basic results, uh, something that we could at least gab about and prepare for. But we can't prepare. We're going to, uh, like the people at home, we're going to sit... And we're going to learn about these results with you. Absolutely. And then we may talk for a couple minutes after that. But uh, we're just waiting now for that. And, uh, oh, hey, this is Michelle Murdoch. <laughs> Michelle, I think we're sort of the same boat here. I don't, I don't think she, she remembers. Wants to come she on. remembers that, yeah, that we spent. We're, we're talking sports now. We're, getting, we're, we're moving on to programming. So. Yeah, yeah. She's laughing. She was in our shoes. Uh, I think it was our first year. Was that our first year? I think it was our first or second year. She, she is avoiding you right yeah, now. Yeah, she's avoiding. She won't even come over <laughs> and talk and bring it up. She knows that if she comes near us, we'll, she'll be on camera for absolutely uh, fifteen she's gonna, minute interview. She's going to stay until they're done. <laughs> I get all the people. Yeah. The, the, uh, Gary so Trudell like just came back in and he, he gave the signal. I it's think they're writing out the handles. results. I think no, no, no. The, it's all the write-ins. Ah, the write-ins okay. are taking all the time like we knew about. So, I wonder how many write-ins there were. That, that'll be uh, interesting Oh, that, we'll find out that too. Uh, but, yeah, getting back to our sports discussion. Oh, sports discussion. Yeah, we're back to sports again. It, it certainly is just very exciting this spring. And, you know, there were some good teams in the fall and winter, but I don't know if I've ever seen – the Hillers this dominant in the spring, all right. around the board. All around the board, it's every everything. Tennis, you got uh, tennis is doing well. You have, uh, I think the oh, boys yeah. are, are the boys the boys are tennis team is uh, doing very good. Uh, I think they have one loss, one or something loss? like that, one or two losses. Boys tennis, and I mean, because we heard for years on the girls tennis, you didn't hear much about the boys until lately, but years the girls tennis under the leadership of uh, of uh, head coach Nancy Clark yep. who retired. Um, but the girls are doing well. Everyone's everyone's doing great, and we can't wait to uh, um, see what this postseason is going to bring. You know, it might be a couple more banners to raise in the fall up in that uh, athletic center. And we'll be uh, trying to follow as much of the playoff action as we can throughout all the sports because uh, we really do want to get uh, all the teams that reach yeah, the postseason uh, in Hopkins. Yeah, we're going to try to do a, a game of the week, try to get uh, lacrosse, who's going to yep. be playing on field three one more time. That boys team, they are unbelievable this year. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. You know? It's a little... Uh, a little easier to follow the action from up there than trying to follow the puck on the ice at Navin. <laughs> but I don't have the height. It's just so high. Right. And that net, oh, yep, awful. So, uh, uh, oh, yeah, we've got uh, some uh, new programs coming up. Yeah, why don't you talk about that? Yeah, new programs. So uh, uh, we revamped uh, Physician Focus. F Physician Focus was on a hiatus as uh, longtime executive producer Rick Gella um, uh, retired. And so the replacements, we had to wait for the replacements to come in, and so we changed up the look on the show a little bit. And so it's a more segmented show instead of a straight sit-at-the-desk talk. So we do have interviews with real doctors covering the important decisions. Um, we just released uh, this month um, a show on concussions and brain injuries. And we had a couple experts. We had a, a pediatrician expert, uh, pediatrician emergency room expert, uh, we had a brain injury survivor and a brain injury advocate. So we had, uh, so that show's airing right now on HK. And I believe our next show, uh, they get me going out and I get to travel. Ah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm heading up to um, Mass General Hospital uh, to discuss Lyme disease. That's a big uh, topic right now. <coughs> Uh, there's say, uh, especially with the tick outbursts, and, and th there's a new tick disease too as yeah, well. Yeah, something to do with that, that I'm, which I think we're going to learn about, and we are learning from the uh, from a doctor I think who discovered the Lyme disease. Well, I don't know. We'll find that out. Hopefully, uh, 
they'll discover a uh, cure because it's it's really uh, getting bad with the Lyme yep. disease and these uh, tick-borne illnesses. Sure. Uh, let's see. What else do we have going on? We have uh, the Celtics. By the way, are up by one. One seventeen left in the first half. There you go. There you go. Celtics 51 are up. Fifty-one to fifty. Fifty-one to fifty. What? They're going back and forth over at the day. garden right now. Yep. Do a day. Gonna love so, it. So uh, that's for those viewers that are waiting for the results. Maybe uh, tuned into us instead of the Celtics sure. game, which I think is definitely most of Hopkinton, I'd say. Uh, well, there you go. There's there's the update. Celtics up Excellent. by one right. with uh, 117 left to go in the first so half. So to go back on the grand match, um, I was also able to upload a, a couple photographs, uh, 447 to be exact. I think I have every couple that march in the Grand March. I have some great photos of them. And where can you find those? You can find those at uh, hcam.tv. Uh, you see the pictures on the slideshow. You can click the direct link to it, or you can see our sister website, seenandhopkin.org, um, and it's the featured album. You can't miss it. A little music to greet you. And, uh, and one thing that we like to do is allow all of our viewers the ability to download any photo that we take on the website. Um, you can have it for free. You can uh, you can purchase nice prints from the website too. Uh, that's an option. We don't make any money off of it. We right. it's just a, a service that is done by the Zenfolio people that that do the uh, hosting oh, of all okay. the pictures. So you can go there. You see great pictures from around town from the shoot, um, which is a, a slideshow that's on the front page. Um, you know, you see nice pictures about um, all the. Uh, Election workers, all the uh, candidates up there in Murderers Row this morning. Um, you see some great prom pictures. You see some sport pictures. Whatever we find around town, and we have uh, people submitting uh, their photos. You know, you feel free. You can uh, submit your photos to us at uh, news at hcam tv, and uh, we could put them up. We'd love to have the uh, contributors. So, you know, people like John Ritz and Kathleen Keller and uh, Michelle Murdoch. Yeah, uh, and any resident out there, or if you're just around Hopkinton, send us your photo. We'd love to use it either on HCAM News or a website. Sure. Uh, we're always looking for uh, contributions uh, from the community. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the more people can help us cover the town, the more the town gets covered. Absolutely. So. As we always say on uh, HCAM News. Yeah. <laughs> Something like I think that's where I heard it before. You know, reading that teleprompter. Yeah, it's a catchy earlier. line. It's a catchy line. Yeah, it's line. catchy. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you copied Michelle's old scripts, right? No. No? No, it's no. just. That's fresh? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Everything right. I do is fresh. I have to watch those tapes. <laughs> Another event coming up, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they're sponsoring a Hiller Shark Tank. Yes. Uh, that's tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, May 16th, 2.30 p.m. That's, a, that's tomorrow? It is tomorrow. <laughs> Breaking news to Mike DeRosian. The Hiller Shark Tank is tomorrow. All right. So they'll have uh, students presenting uh, business ideas they've been working on, and there'll be some judges to judge the students on their ideas. So it should be a pretty interesting program going on over at uh, Hopkinton High School tomorrow. All right, excellent. Excellent. Oh, the uh, art, exhi uh, art exhibition opens Thursday at the high school. You get to see some fantastic art in all different medias, photography, pencil, um, oil, uh, they have uh, uh, sculptures, ceramics. Uh, it's it's just a, I get blown away every year at all the different uh, type of art that you see, and these artists uh, are phenomenal. They're, they're just great. A lot of uh, uh, gold key and silver key winners from the state uh, in our school. So check it out. That starts I believe 4:30 on Thursday. All right, all kinds of stuff coming up. And then uh, you got a, a lot of events coming up this summer. You got the Hopkinton uh, Multicultural Festival, which is going to happen a little while down right. the road. We also have uh, the concerts on the common that, that will begin. Uh, Saturday, June the 10th is the Multicultural Festival. June 10th, there you yeah. go. And when's concerts on the common? Concerts again? on the common, I think, starts on the Sunday after the 4th. I believe it is the 11th. It sure, should, yeah, it should we'll go with that for now. Oh, wait, is that you? <laughs> I need, I need, oh, this is July. No, this is uh, July here. So it should be the 9th. I believe it's the 9th. There's some great local talent there. I got Steve Spector, Barbara Kessler, um, uh, Shanna Jackman from Milford, who's a yep. country singer. Uh, we 
yeah, some some uh, bands that have been here before. Uh, 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 Laura Hanson uh, gave me the list, and I just haven't put it in yet. But yeah, it, it looked awesome. Absolutely, it's always a great event, and it gets a big turnout over there at concerts sure. on the common. Another event coming up is uh, the always looked forward to Hop. Hopkinton Public Library Foundation's Touch a Touch Truck, a truck. Yeah. Sunday, June fourth. Bring the kids. That's a lot of fun. My favorite thing there is the moving company. They get a big box truck and they roll out all this bubble wrap, and then the kids just get go run in it, jump around, roll in it. Is it just the kids, Mike, or did uh, you get up? There I a did. Times? They did let me go in there. I went up there to take a picture, and then uh, I says, "Do you mind if I roll around a minute?" And five minutes later, he asked me to leave. <laughs> but yes, it's, it's a fun time. But I mean, they have uh, all your local contractors will have their sh trucks all shiny, have their backhoes, and the kids can jump in it, pretend to drive it. They even have some cool little demonstrations there. Uh, one year they had a, a house cleaning company that did uh, side and roof washing, pie, uh, high power spray. And so they had, they made little games out of like the squirt guns, like how to clean a house or whatever. It was actually pretty, uh, pretty well. The food trucks, oh yeah, phenomenal. Can't beat those. Oh, they get that cannoli truck there. Uh, I don't know if it comes from Riviera or not, but that's here all the time. And great cannolis. I've I've had one or two from there before. <laughs> They're good. Well, it's always a fun event. Uh, definitely bring the kids. Yeah, money benefits the public library. They do um, the. I'm figuring how you get your tickets. I don't know if you can you get. No, you can get them right. Right at, them, right at the event. I mean, right? you could get them before. Yeah, they give you like little wristbands. They usually have a little train ride uh, that goes yep. around the whole venue. Um, but there's so much stuff. And like I said, the kids, what's cool, they climb it into an excavator or a backhoe or, or a cherry picker truck or something like that. It's, it's always great. Oh, yeah. It's great experience. What kid doesn't like No, no an adult doesn't like it. Oh, right? I know. No, yeah, well, you get your picture taken. I want to climb into those tractors and beep the horn, you know? <laughs> And uh, there may be a little fun thing that uh, I can't announce right now, but there's going to be a little uh, fun little H cam thing happening at the Touch of Truck. I hope, but more on that to come. Not ready to <laughs> announce that. Keep it eye HCAM TV for all the latest news of uh, what's going on with with that. And an event that just happened uh, this past weekend was the Hopkinton Police Association Fishing Derby. Fishing Derby. I was there. It was a nice uh, Saturday. Good fishing weather. It was yeah. a little bit cloudy, and I think it rained in the morning, but the rain held off for the event. But uh, when it's a little bit rainy, it's always good for fishing, and it was a lot of fish caught. Yeah. One kid caught 31 fish, which is unbelievable. And, of course, That's he ended amazing. up winning the trophy the most, for the most fish. Yep, sure. And, and uh, all the police officers are there donating their time. And I'm sure Chucky Wallace, was he a man in the grill? He always oh, comes yeah. back. He, yep. Here he is retired, and he still comes back to help at all these police events. Um, but it, it's a good time. They, they feed the kids burgers and dogs and drinks. Um, most of the day. Anything else going on there? They usually have some kind of Yeah, they, they had the food going, uh, the burgers, dogs, and, and uh, the drinks. And... Uh, of course, they had uh, five or six trophies they gave out for first, second, and third place, sure. most fish, yep. uh, biggest fish, um, and it's just always a it's, a, it's a great tradition, and they've been doing it for many years now, and what they and a, a lot of preparation goes into it. They have to like fill that lake with fish. Yeah, they get stock it up. Yeah, that's they that's, spend a good amount of money doing that. They do. <laughs> they do spend some money and they they do put in the time and it's it's well loved. I mean, I'll never forget. I moved to town uh, back in '87 and you know my first uh, uh, first kid uh, came around and sure enough, I think it was 1994 was the first time that we visited the uh, the Fisher Derby and we went every year after that. Until they grown out of it, of course. <laughs> uh, I saw Chief Lee there. He was yep. fishing. Um, it was pretty funny. Uh, as soon as as soon as I saw him, he, he was going to throw his line, and he hooked onto somebody else's. So that was pretty funny. Uh, but he did say did, he did got that, some did fish. That, did that so. make the news real? No, no, no. no, no it didn't. We and love our police. And today we're not live right now, are we? Live? Oh, no, no. We tape everything, <laughs> and so. So uh, we're getting a signal from our director, Tom Dings. Five minutes. We've got five minutes. So. And by the way, at the half, uh, Washington leading the Celtics 55-53. Yeah, well, you didn't have to say that. 
I, I know uh, people are probably tuning in now. You know, they're flicking back. That's right. Yeah, we're getting ready. We're, we're here. We're, we're almost results. like five minutes away. Yeah. Um, also, I want to uh, mention, too, that uh, this week here, it's National Peace Officers Week. Uh, today is, is Peace Officers Memorial Day, uh, where everyone pays tribute to um, all the uh, men and women in blue that uh, protect us and that have lost their lives in, in the line of their duty. But um, this uh, was written into law, JFK signed into law in 1962, and then as the holiday grew, it became a national week, and it just not honors the ones that lost, but it also honors the men and women who, who uh, provide the fine service that they do to keep us safe. And uh, so we want to shout out to all the uh, Hopkins finest, um, Chief Lee and, and his bunch that do a good job uh, keeping this town in line. Our crew member, uh, Tom Dings, is over here. I don't hey. know if he wants to come on. Yeah. Oh, hey, you know what? So <laughs> talk to Tom for a minute because um, i got to go fix the thing so we don't get bumped off the air. All right. I need more headroom. <laughs> Tom, how's it going? Not too bad. It's not. It's not every day we get the uh, the production uh, people on the no, air. Well, we were on for an hour and a half. Yep. Automatically, and then we're off. So oh. you guys have used up your hour and a half. Okay. We'd like to renew our time here on. The so show. are we on right now? Well, we're on the now, but oh, okay. we wouldn't be on in, when he comes out. So uh -huh. Mike is upping the schedule. I think this has been uh, one of the longer waits we've had, <laughs> and you've worked a few I, of these. I worked, uh, I worked one in the shows. auditorium here, and. Uh, and I didn't know how long it would take, whatever. They've got to count all the write-ins. Every every write-in has got to be counted, or if some mistake is made by the automated machines, they've got to count all that by hand, and they, they don't, they lock the room, and, you know, media's not allowed in, and they're not allowed out, and whatever, yep. until they get all the counts. So, um, didn't know how long that would take. And at the time, we were trying to do graphics underneath each, you know, whatever topic, or each person who comes up to interview, which was too much work to do, and oh, yeah. to keep up with, and... Um, and then we just ran out of stuff. And Mike right. went on about the same whole thing, you know, prom and whatever else was going on in the town. It was unbelievable. Well, I think it's a good opportunity to catch everybody up on uh, right. some of the happenings and some right. of the events coming up. Exactly. But it's worked out well. I mean, we could stay on air all day. <laughs> yeah, we could have a we could have a uh, election telethon right now. Do your whole show. <laughs> Do your whole news show. Right? That's right. Remember what the news is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, quite a waiting process this year. But, of course, you know, I think there was a lot of voters. Big turnout. It happens. Um, a lot of counting to do. So they're making sure they, they get it right. They don't want to have to recount. So it's most important to get it right the first time. Right. And what they might do is if they haven't finished all the write-ins or they haven't finished all of what, something, they can come in and say, look, these are preliminary results. Come to the podium and say what they are uh, and say that, that's all we're saying. We're not telling you all the results. We're telling you some, and here's the preliminary results. They could do that, yep. uh, and we hear that they will do that in about five minutes or whatever. Right. You know, and a and few minutes. And, of course, like uh, the, the results that you're going to see tonight aren't technically the official results. Those will be released uh, later on. Right. These are almost the official results, mm -hmm. but not quite. Of course, they have to set them in stone after they read them off here tonight. Right. This is more just for the media and the candidates that ran mm. in the election to find out if more than likely they won. Right. Right. Um, but usually the results that uh, they reveal here are very accurate right on the money. So pretty much mm. it's official, but not officially official, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but it's. Uh, I think the suspense is uh, building up. I think we're going to have a lot of close races. It's tough, in my opinion, to predict who won any of these contested races. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was all very close. But uh, let's talk about uh, the production of this uh, live broadcast we're oh, doing. Sure. Um, now, you're running pretty much everything. You're running the camera. You're running uh, the graphics and the audio. Mm -hmm. Um, you've been you do that for a lot of programs uh, on age cam now how do you like doing uh, live shows like this where you're pretty much a one-man band well <laughs> the live show in the field can be one-man band like you said um, with only one camera and just hop around where you need to and, and leave things set uh, 
generally live shows in the studio are not that way. Studio, you'd need more people, and we have the volunteers for that. So you have a person doing audio only, and a person doing a camera only, and so forth, and a director. Um, and we can take a little bit of that on the road for you know for a play or something. But I don't know. I think the 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 live show has a different amount of fun to it, different appeal, where you've got you know. Nobody knows what's going to happen right. next, or you know, it could could even just be a basketball game. It's a sporting event that's live, or a play that's live. But right. but uh, you know, how about a live call-in show where you could have well, like candidates debate or candidates, mm-hmm. uh, you know, meet the candidates night. Yep. That we had a call. No one called in, but I was running sound for that, and you could, you know, with the soundboard, you could bring up the audio for the caller or the audio for the people in the room to hear the caller or whatever. Um, it's just, I think it's great to bring information to the community and. Oh yeah, you know, try to do it in a way that's well and the best and, we can. Technically. And live television, I mean, it's it's interesting, it's riveting. People are going to mm-hmm. tune in, and uh, especially right now, I mean, obviously, uh, we're waiting, we're waiting for the results, but um, we're staying live. We're talking about stuff going on in town. Uh, filling people in. They don't know what we're going to talk about next. In fact, we don't even know what we're going to talk about <laughs> next. How can you beat that? <laughs> you, you get suspense. You right. get uh, uh, you get entertained. You, you get everything you could ask for uh, right. with a live broadcast like this, I think, Tom. And you get the results <laughs> as soon as anybody else does. You know, you get That's the results right. Right, you'll, right when they're available. You'll be the first to know, really. Right. Right. Uh, and not a lot of people uh, could say that. Um, because they only let certain people here into the cafeteria, I believe. I don't. I don't think anybody could just walk in, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, they can. Okay. Oh, we're open. We're open to the public. Right. So now. they did open to the public. Okay. Um, but I'm sure uh, there's a lot of people in town that are very interested in what's going on. I saw a lot of sign holders out there mm-hmm. this year, and I don't know if I've ever seen that many sign holders. Right. Well, I drove in to to vote this morning. Sign holders in the rain. And then I drove in just to set this up at maybe 7.15 or so. They were still out there. All, you know, I, I rolled the window down and one of them said hi. You know. <laughs> but, uh, so now you got a little bit of uh, on-air experience and, of course, you, you got the production experience. So uh, what do you like better? <laughs> oh, I'll do the behind-the-camera <laughs> stuff any day. I'll leave the, all this to you. But. Hey, well, you're doing a, you're, you're doing a good job. You're doing <laughs> a good job. You're doing better than Mike did. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's standing right here. I'm just kidding, Mike. <laughs> uh, but Mike, Mike is great at this. I, ab- I, I, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, but it's good to get you on. You do a lot of work for HCAM, so um, uh, we can't thank you enough for all you do for HCAM. And uh, but it's it's good to get you on. I'm sure a lot of people uh, are wondering who, who are the people behind the scenes of these mm. HCAM broadcasts. Well, this is one of them. Well, yeah, this is one of the main faces behind the scenes. Come and see. Um, we're we're, we're uh, Jim trains everybody in, in terms of you know how to run a camera or how to run whatever, uh, and you can volunteer to help out. Um, we're we're I wouldn't say always yeah. looking for volunteers, but we're always welcoming them. And uh, I think it was I don't know a couple times a year Jim runs that. Uh, set of workshops for you know learn how to use control room learn how to use and you're, you're never alone it's always a team effort uh, that's part of the fun of it too is right is, you know it does take a team to get it to get it all right oh absolutely so much goes into every kind of production whether it's a half hour show or an hour show or even a show like this a lot of planning went into this it it takes a long time to hook up all the equipment to go live and uh, to get everything organized and, and plan everything. Uh, just so much background behind the scenes stuff goes into every broadcast, especially when the other night, I believe you worked on the uh, debates with us. Or, or meet the candidates, there? I or think. Or meet the candidates. Yeah, debates, I had a conflict. But, right. But meet um, the candidates. Uh, so much planning goes into that behind the scenes and, yep. you know, plan the camera angles, how the set's going to look. Uh, it, it takes a lot. And you right. know about all of this because you're involved in a lot of the planning processes. Yep. Well, I wanted to get the sound. I was doing sound for that. I wanted to get the sound such that the people in the studio audience could hear everything. And obviously, people on the channel could hear everything. And uh, I think we got it, what, you know. Well, anyway, I'll uh, hand it back right. over to Mike. and uh, We'll hand it back to Mike. Well, thanks. Tom, it's been good talking to you, and uh, thanks for coming on. Here we go. I'll look at uh, one of the uh, production uh, personnel and one of the great uh, volunteers of HCAM. Oh, yeah, the old Hanks. reliable and uh, not just a volunteer, too, a uh, crew member, but he's also a board member. Right, he's right. On, he sits on the HCAM board with uh, fantastic other volunteers, Mary Arnott and uh, John Ritz. 
and of course uh, uh, representing the schools, uh, the the president of HK, you know, Ashok mm -hmm. Ghosh. So we appreciate it. He was probably watching. He's one of our biggest fans. Well, I mean, not personal fans, but HKM fans. Yep. Uh, he watches all the time. And uh, it, a lot of viewers, uh, and some viewers out there, as they're waiting, they got us streaming on their phones. And so when I went out to go check, they says, hey, I'm loving this talk, you know? And, yep. and I says, really? <laughs> I says, it's killing me. I can't, I'm stretching. I says, I got that little break. I was choking up here. So I get that little break. I suck down a bottle of water. And then I go see Michelle Murdoch, and I says, how come you didn't come save me? She says, no, because uh, the last time she was here and we were in a position like this, she says, all right, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's uh, do a recrap. I says, a recrap? <laughs> oh. and so I'm ever sure she's going to be then, thrilled you brought that up. Well, yeah, I mean, she, uh, she reminded me of it. That's, what, that's why she would have come back out, because she was afraid to say recrap again. <laughs> so, but well, she's... Uh, but she was, As uh, I was talking about with Tom, it's right. live television. You it's live television. Anything can happen. Obviously happen, right? Well, happen. Anything but, uh, can happen. We'll, we'll show that we'll uh, recrap this when we <laughs> hear from Connor. That one's for you, Michelle. Um, so out there, they have all the writings tabulated. Uh, still no um, printouts of anything yet. So we're going to hear it here first. We're not hearing it in there. Normally, I'd have all the winners by now, and we just wait for uh, the clerk to read them. But... Now we're going to find out for the first time. What's some of the chatter you're hearing out there? And is, is there a lot of people gathered uh, waiting? There's a lot of people that are uh, just waiting and watching. All the tables are picked up. As a matter of fact, a couple of the lecture workers are, are back in here now uh, to watch. Uh, Russ was just out. He picked up the sandwich board, pointed the voters around back. You know, he's got that all done. And just about everything is picked up and spotless. They even picked up the little, some little snacks too. They came out and offered us some uh, snacks while we waited. I didn't get you nothing because I, I know we're, we're both trying to watch our figures here. <laughs> so well, uh, well, I had to keep the somebody had to keep the broadcast going. Someone you know? had to keep it going. Yeah, <laughs> thank, thank goodness. I mean, you know, I just hope he doesn't have to double his pay now. You know. Oh yeah, he's definitely going to be asking for a new he's contract. Gonna, no gonna, doubt about gonna, that. He's going to want a raise. Yeah, he's going to say. On air talent. Add oh, that yeah. to your resume. There's your raise right there. <laughs> yeah, he's got, he's got to get a bonus for that one, I think. <laughs> Any news on the Celtics yet? Um, last How about the weather? Have you checked the Hopkins weather? It is going to be pretty much like it's been, except with, there's not a lot of rain coming. It's right. going to be high 50s, uh, mid to low 60s, and then Thursday... It's going to heat up to like almost 90. There's still at the half so of the Celtics. So where can we find out about Hopkins and weather trends? Well, you can find that on hcam.tv, really? our website. And that is courtesy of our good friend uh, Eric Cardi. Eric Cardi, the, the water and sewer manager? That's him, yep. Really? And he's also a weather spotter for WBZ. And he shares uh, a lot of his uh, weather information with us. And, and his photographs. He has like a whole system in the, uh, the DPW that tracks the weather and right. what the high temperature was, low temperature. So you can find all that on hcam.tv and it's really interesting stuff because some weeks, obviously it's New England, some weeks are just yeah, crazy. Right. Some weeks you I, might see a high of 85 like, and a low of 30. Like this week here, I had a little frost on my car. I mean, we, we just pulled in uh, the tomato plants because uh, frost on Wednesday night and uh, come Thursday it's supposed to be 90. Right. Yep. So... You, you just never know what you're going to get. Never know. And then, by you the don't way, like the weather? After it's 90, it's going to go back down, I think, to the 60s. So of course. Of course. It, you'll get a nice burst of heat, yeah. but I don't think it's going to stick around long. As long as it's nice enough that I can get on that motorcycle and I can just go and go and go, I'll be happy. Something, yes, oh, and, absolutely. Uh, this John Cotino wants to know how the Celtics are doing. We just, we just updated. Uh, they're at the half, trailing by two, 55-53. We're having a long halftime. We'll see. Didn't update the score yet on the uh, yeah, come on website. In. Come on yeah. In. So yeah, you've been out there uh, patiently waiting. Oh, oh shit! They're, they're, they're uh, calling me when, when, when all right. Yeah. So and, and, the, and he said shoot. By the way, he didn't say the other word. So we are live. We are live. <laughs> so uh, out there patiently waiting. Uh, yeah, it's, what do you think? It, yeah, it's it's just it's it's taking a long time. It's um, I don't know. I think there are a lot of writing candidates or something sure. like that. I don't know what it is. But, you know, hey, this is what happens. So I saw your smiling face out there this morning. The pouring rain and the cold, it's still smiling now. How was the experience out there at Murderer's Row? Well, you know, this is, uh, I guess this is probably my 
the 10th uh, election out there. We're not, well, then, then there's the, the national and the states sure. and the primaries. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I just figured that that's what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. You know, if you, if you, if you want to be a, a good, engaged citizen, you go out and you vote and you, and you, 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 you pick a candidate and you, and you support a candidate. Sure. And, uh, you know, whether it's a local, a state, or a national, that's what you do. So that's what I, that's what I always do. And so, it, especially for me this time, I got out there at uh, just after 6 o'clock this morning, and I didn't leave there until we cleaned up the whole place out there, policed right. the area, yep. and um, I don't know, I'm waiting to find out what happened. Well, a little tighter this year with the fence. Oh, yeah. That's, you gotta, we probably have to talk to the Water and Sewer Commission and people about that. Yeah, they, they didn't leave room for the uh, for the tent for you guys, but um, overall, the, uh, the feel out there, I know when I drive in, and I'm just here to do work, because I don't vote in town anymore. But everyone's waving. Everyone's happy to see you. Yeah, it's fun. It, 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 it it's an experience. It really is. It's definitely an experience. They're, they're the uh, the uh, usual suspects out there, every, year in and year out. And um, you know, you get you get to be you get to be friends with uh, whatever the side is. That's what I've always yeah. said. Yes, you know that's it's uh, we're a partisan town, but um, you know it, it's it's just best to put the uh, the best person in. And that's the way I've always looked at it. It's. Uh, uh, it's more important to, to move the town forward and to always put the best person in. That's the way I like to look at it. And everyone lives in town. They're all stakeholders, and you know, and, and it's your neighbors. Absolutely. Same thing like, like they announce at town meeting every year. Yeah. They Love just say, that. "Yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're, we, everybody's gonna vote. Don't hold it against anybody. We're all gonna be neighbors tomorrow morning." And, sure. and we are, and that's what ends up happening. And that's, that's and that's what makes that town great. Sure. So, uh, can you give us a, a, a sort of stretcher for time? Any update on the uh, town hall work? Um, have you have you been updated on the town hall work? Yeah, uh, not not this week. It's it, it's it's coming along, but it's 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 extensive, sure. and we're trying to do some updates at the same time to to bring the town hall into the twenty first century. Sure. Um, we are trying to locate uh, some temporary quarters, uh, some. Midterm quarters right now they're they're in temporary and 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 the, and the town hall personnel are just being great. I just want to look out and say that yeah. they, they they've um, they're, they're scattered all over the place. Right, but but in 16 hours we were up and running. Now that's the most important that's, that's thing. A huge and they they did uh, you know we didn't lose any customer service and that's the main thing that the town manager is looking for is is good customer service. And within 16 hours we had everybody up and 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 they're just doing yeoman's work. I mean they're in tight conditions right now and they're still still doing everything it works out great for somebody like me because i can get to see four departments in in, in one spot each time so it works yeah, out great no, that's outstanding and uh and you get some new residents too you'll be at uh, the h camp studios on uh, the tuesday night's meeting tomorrow night tomorrow, tomorrow night, night we're at h yeah yeah we have to try and find a uh, well I, I, I don't know if Love i want you. hey i don't Love know if you. i want i don't know Love if i want you just you, selectman. I'm, you're, oh, you're, selectman. You're still a selectman. I'm selectman. It's I'm still, still selectman. Yes, yes. The, the, the meeting tomorrow night. Yes, is yes. we'll be at H Cam Studios. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah, and we love having you there. Uh, the planning board moved. They came there for one night before the incident because they needed a big space for the public hearing, and then poof. Yeah. Now we're stuck with them. But and now we get stuck no, with you. No, we like would like love said, having, like said, love before, it. We're um, the, the town manager's working on trying to find a uh, another building where we can move everybody from town hall into one building that has parking, its accessibility, and, and everything else. So we're still working on some some details, and hopefully we'll have an announcement very soon. And and thank you too to all the uh, private places uh, that helped out, like for instance, Cross Point with their parking lot, because uh, you have selectmen at the town at the fire station. Um. <laughs> Yeah, this yeah they're split up. Yeah, this yeah, yeah right. The selectman's office is at the fire station, along with uh, uh, the planning board and ex- uh, inspections, and uh, uh, there were a couple others. The perimeter, right? Like, yeah, right. yeah but then there's also the senior center and and uh, the treasurer, yeah. right? And then the uh, police station, the yeah. town clerk, and uh, that, that's that's amazing. And, and still, I mean, it's nice that the network works so that you know you, you're still connected. That's that was. One of the big things is the technology, getting all these numbers rerouted to all these different places. I mean, yeah, in 16 hours. And we owe, we owe everything to to the uh, IT department. They really came through. But town manager really organized it, and and it, it, and, and again to all the to all the uh, staff at uh, at town hall. Really, thank you, thank you, thank you for for keeping up customer service and really taking care of the people in the town. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's it's nice, you know, they get little new digs for a little while, but that does get old because. No. 
it's, it's tight. Tough. It's tough. It, it's, it reminds me when back when I was a, a, an early engineer where we had uh, table, desk, table, drawing table, desk, drawing table, desk, you know, in a whole row. There'd be 30 sure. of us in this one room. And, uh, you know, cause that's when I first started, there was no CAD. Right, Everything right. was uh, was on a board. Yep. And it was tight quarters. And they, they weren't used to it. People were used to having offices with some privacy so they could speak to people and sure. get things done. And now they're all stacked up on each other with several different departments all working right next to each other. So it's tough. But uh, we, hopefully we can, we can take care of it and, and uh, move on and give everybody better quarters. Well, that's all right, so I'm going to go back in and see if there's any numbers coming up, right. but thanks for everybody. If, if you hear anything, let us know, eh? Right? Thank you very all much. Right, thanks, Sean. Oh, yeah, so there's a nice little update on Town Hall. You know, everybody is scattered all over the place, um, and, and they're still providing the services. And to have a major flood, I mean, they're, they're talking a major three-inch water pipe, which well, is fire sprinkler protection, on the third floor ruptures, and it decides to flood the whole place. Unhealthy, unsafe to work. Sixteen hours later, we're back in business. Middle of the day too. It yeah. all happened. Yeah, and they they did a great job. And you know, senior center had some offices. Everybody opened up their doors. Uh, local businesses, uh, the CVS allowed um, uh, the town to use the parking for the firefighters and for so the firefighters and the town hall employees parked up there. So the back of the fire station, which was for the firefighters, are now for the public. So they had to do a lot of work to uh, get that done, and we appreciate it. So, Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it, <laughs> I, I don't think there could have been uh, worse possible timing for that to happen as well. No. You got town meeting that was approaching at the time, town election, of course. It's, you had all the public hearings that were, were scheduled there. and Right. Yeah. Oh. But now, uh, as, as mentioned, we have the selectmen will be meeting uh, at the HCAM studios uh, for the next few months. Yep. I already got them on my schedule. And uh, tomorrow we go out live at 645. They will, um, uh, a few things uh, on the plate. Uh, I'm by the to way, I, yeah. I was uh, told the results will be read momentarily. So yes. That's as encouraging. I've seen, as I've seen a few of the uh, stakeholders and some of the press march back in here. Yeah, they were just looking for any glimpse of any kind of printouts, but I've heard all the write-ins were calculated and tallied, and we should be doing it. I think uh, yeah. I have some rumblings. Now they're still not moving. I hear the rumblings out there by the trophy case, but... The suspense is building, the suspense that's it, for sure. It's, it's killing me because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of what else is there left to talk well, about. Well, actually, uh, John Ritz uh, sent us some, uh, in, some notes some fun to mention. Facts? Yep. Uh, I find uh, this is awesome. Good. What do you got, John? All right. Poetry on Saturday at Age Cam. Of course. Wake up and smell wake the poetry. Wake up and smell the poetry. We have, uh, we have a filmmaker. Uh, did he give us the names? Or? He did not, no. no. I know I have it here somewhere. But we have... Uh, a uh, Hopkinton resident, singer-songwriter, now living in Brooklyn, is uh, Abby Peralt. Uh, Shell Peralt, uh, host, it's her daughter, Abby, and she's going to be uh, performing her original music. Uh, we have poet, I know I got it here somewhere. And uh, well, you yeah, yeah. dig that yeah, up, I'll also got? mention there's a Pops concert on Sunday at the high school. That, and John is covering that. That's uh, the high school uh, jazz bands and choruses and so forth. They they do a whole music venue. They, they put out these tables and everyone sits. and um, it, it's, it's set up like a summer pops concert. It's, it's really cool. So uh, wake up and smell the poetry Saturday. Of course, the public is welcome if you're into yeah, poetry, uh, uh, music, entertainment. It's filmmaker Artemis uh, Joukowsky. Author Sari Wilson, and of course, as I mentioned, Abby Peral. That's at 10:30. It's free. You come on in if you. Um, uh, you, you oh, and we also have the open mic, so we'll have the three performers, and then we'll take a little break. We got coffee, we got scones, we've got muffins, sometimes just cake. And you'll be uh, signing autographs, know. right? I'm always signing autographs. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Get Mike Terosian's autograph. Sure, sure. Uh, it's my eight by ten headshot. You'll you'll love it. Someday they'll be worth millions, <laughs> millions. But uh, so it's it's free poetry. It starts at uh, ten thirty at the HKM Studios. Absolutely, and they put on a good show there. Some uh, great local uh, poetry. Super talent, yep. super talent. And then, uh, as I said before, pops concert Sunday at the high school. 
And then um, another thing uh, that John Ritz said we should mention, and I agree with him, uh, the girls' track coach, Brian Hall, he's leaving after this year. Yes, it is. Brian Hall's he's retiring. Last, yeah. And he's had a tremendous coaching career with the Hillers, and they are constantly one of the top track programs in the state. And he's had he's having another tremendous year this year at the helm of the uh, sure. Hillers girls' track team. Sure. Hey, I just want to mention to people, too, uh, uh, a uh, very rare Tom Nappy correction. No. Join the future entrepreneurs of Hopkins in student at Hopkins High School present business ideas, public speaking, financial skills, the competition, uh, competition and completion of this program is May 23rd will result in student winning scholarship ideas. That's what I got in an email. Ah, okay. Uh, well, I apologize for... Uh any mistake I might have made Competition that and completion. That's why I was freaking out because I am not around tomorrow. Uh-oh. And I'm covering that event, so you had me a little nervous there. Oh, boy. But, uh, and then uh, also the summer band starting soon. They're in their 13th year. Yes, the 13th year. That's the uh, high school alumni, Hopkinton residents, and current students that participate in this one event. They do the one show during the uh, summer concert and they practice as soon as school at, uh, well they're pra- I think they're practicing now <coughs> and they pra- I think they meet on Thursday nights at the high school and uh, they practice once a week for one show and one show only and for the longest time they used to get rained out so now they come up with a backup plan so we either get the HCA or the high school or something like that that we can say hey, it's going to rain let's go in there perfect because they practice all every week in, oh yeah in, for what no concert so, gotta have lucky. the concert. Gotta have the concert, especially the Hopkins band. You can say that's the biggest crowd, yeah. right? Biggest crowd for that band. Well, a lot of people are awaiting the election yeah. results. Tom, anything yet? And of course, uh, a lot no. of sports fans who are awaiting the ele- election results are wondering what's happened with the Celtics. Well, yeah. we got a, we got an update for you right here. Uh, Celtics and Washington tied in the third quarter at seventy-two apiece. Five minutes, one second left to go really? in the third quarter. Really? Can you see that? Hello? So the election hey. results uh, should be out momentarily. And uh, we will get you those uh, once Connor Deegan, the town clerk, comes out. And uh, should be any second now. And throughout this evening, we have interviewed some of the candidates. And we'll have... Uh, a shortened version of this broadcast uh, that right, will be you. available uh, as well. So if you missed uh, any of the excitement or the interviews from candidates, we'll definitely yeah. uh, have some of the interviews I, out there. I never take a phone call on the air. You had to take I even that look. one. I had to take it. It was the boss. We were both right. They are doing the competition on tomorrow, and then they're going to finish it with the results on the following week. So it's a two-weeker. Perfect. So we are covering the final, not the first one. Unless you want to go there. Excellent. You yeah. Can go. yeah. Maybe. You can go there. Good you can chance. go to it. But Shock Tech, what a great idea. It is. Great, it is. great opportunity. Very good idea. And great there's a lot of geniuses here in uh, Hopkinton High School, so I think there'll be some great ideas presented. These kids are amazing. I mean, just, just, you know, I mean, you just covered the science fair. Oh, it, it blows me away every year. Every year. I mean, and we're not talking about, you know, all these little poster boards and someone, you know, growing a plant or something. I mean, these kids here are designing apps. They're actually putting patterns on their designs. They're, uh, and they're experimenting uh, with these experiments that they're doing are being seen nationally and being seen by companies. Companies willing to take their ideas even further. It's, it's phenomenal, you know? It's not just the little volcano that you made in 11th grade, right? I couldn't even make that. You couldn't do that, yeah? I was never a science I, guy. I did it once, but I did it with a battery system. It was an electronic version. It wasn't just a bromo seltzer, you know? I did it with... with ex- Exploded things and whatever. It was actually pretty cool until it caught fire. But it, it was fun. Sorry, Mrs. Lehman. I didn't mean this. And by the way, speaking of the... Uh, science, those eye, I'm sure those eyebrows <laughs> grew back. <laughs> speaking of the science and engineering fair, you could find a bunch of clips from uh, this past year as well as years before that on our YouTube page. 
uh, youtube.com slash HCAMTV, and I believe I made a category for that as well, specifically for the so. Science Fair, because yes. we have a bunch of clips in there, and uh, we usually have a couple of clips uh, from each year available, and you can see all these great projects that these yep. students work on uh, during the Science and Engineering Fair, and some of them, uh, they went all the way to nationals and, and ranked pretty high as well. So uh, always some great yeah. projects there. I tell you, it's, it's amazing what these kids can do today. And, and the, the learning that they have going on in this uh, school system is just incredible. Fantastic leadership, some great administrators. Uh, Dr. McLeod, who is the uh, captain of the ship, um, she does a fantastic job. and She's got a great team behind her. Um, and it, it's just phenomenal to hear the programs that these kids are doing. I mean, whoever thought that Chinese would be a study in Hopkins? You know? Right. Never, never thought of it. Right, and uh, that's what's great about Hopkinton is they get so many different programs in there that you can't find at other schools. It's very rare uh, uh, to have some of the programs that Hopkinton does, but uh, it's, a, it's a fortunate town, a fortunate community, and certainly a fortunate school system as well. Yeah, you, know, you know how fortunate, uh, I mean, how everyone knows how great the schools are. I don't have to really boast it too much, but here we are, Article 8, $82 million town budget, and presentation by selectmen, presentation by school committee. Any questions? You could hear crickets. There was yep. nothing, nobody, and it got voted on unanimously. It was just, just unbelievable. And and a lot of it, you know, the biggest part of the budget is the schools. I mean, they, they you know, and that and they're driven, and they're driven by um, salaries. It costs them whatever. Eighty-five percent of their budget is payroll. So, but you got to pay to have. The best in what ranked fifth in the third of the state and uh, the third third of the state and uh, eighth or ninth in the country or something. Like that. It's just yep. it's just great stuff. It absolutely is, and uh, the community knows that, and that's what makes the school system so great. They know that you have to put resources and, and financing into the school system and into different programs if if you want them to be among the best, and they're not afraid to do that, and that's what puts them right up there. Yeah. What else we got going on? Anything else on the calendar? Yeah, well, uh, as I mentioned, it's a busy sports week. Uh, Hiller's Baseball on Thursday. They'll be taking on Ashland, 3.45 p.m. start time. Uh, it's Thursday, Ju uh, May 18th. Come down and uh, watch that game. It's, it's going to be a good one between the Hillers and Ashland, and you got to see this Hillers baseball team yeah, at least once this year. So if you're around, it, also, impressive. we mentioned this earlier, it's going to be a beautiful afternoon. It'll be a fantastic afternoon. You're going to have to bring your sunscreen for that one. Oh, yeah. They, they say it's going to be steamy. Nine degrees, sun is going to be bright, not a cloud in the sky. Yep, absolutely. I'll be uh, I'll be certainly wearing sunscreen for that one. I, I, I got a sunburn uh, doing a game where it was 60 degrees out, so definitely uh, have to make sure I got the uh, sunscreen sure. for this 90-degree uh, game on Thursday. And then Friday, uh, the 19th, softball against Millis. That'll be a good battle. Millis softball program, pretty good. They'll give the Hillers a run for their money. And uh, that's a big game uh, for the Hillers as they are trying to, they're already into the postseason, they already clinched a spot, but they're trying to up their seeding and get some uh, home field advantage. And believe it or not, Mike, it's already almost the end of the spring so sports fast. season. So fast. Flies by. So fast. And, and, you know, we had a, well, I think a, one of the reasons it seems like it goes so fast, too, is all the delays in the beginning. Right. So it's, I think I think we, are we getting close? I said, Dirk, no? No? Okay. Tom must have been waving to a family member. I thought he was, I thought he was waving to me. So. I believe it was Mary Arnott who was out there. Oh. I think she might have uh, volunteered with the, she does. She's on, the election. She, she's an election, uh, election uh, poll worker. Right. Yep. Um, so there's there's our... Uh, hopefully he's getting the inside scoop right now. <laughs> no, I doubt it. No, no. Connor right, runs a tight ship, and uh, oh, he's not going to give out absolutely. any secrets. Yep. Any secrets. Where else we at? But, um, so, yeah, but we were talking about uh, the, the spring sports season yes. already coming to an end, and there was a lot of rainouts in the beginning, and the last two weeks of the season are just totally cramped. Yep. Yep. Totally cramped. And then, then we think we get a break, but bam, summer ball. Yep. Ashland Legion, again, That's right. covered Ashland for Legion us. What's baseball. that, fourth year, third year? What, how many years? It's going to be year number three. Yeah, number three. I or maybe year number four. I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember. Oh, you're terrible at math anyways. That's right. But I can't never. remember what I ate for breakfast. Yes. So. 
Uh, that's true. Of, I, I believe it's our third, but it could be our fourth. Maybe our fifth. No, I'm just kidding. Well, Definitely not. It's, de- it's either third or fourth. We know that for sure. But uh, they're going to be a good team this year. Between Ashland and uh, the Hopkins and baseball team, both very good teams in the TVL. Any uh, idea around players yet? They, well, I mean, you could get a general idea um, from some of the players that were uh, around last year, but mm-hmm. there's also uh, the split with Milford for Hopkinton. So right. depending on the way Legion works is depending on what area you're in, you go Correct. to a certain Legion team. But if that Legion team uh, cuts you or you don't make it, then you can go to the go other to one. The other. Right. So there's a small chunk of Hopkinton that goes to Milford, and most of Hopkinton goes, goes to, to Ashland. Ashland. Right. Uh, but I believe... Because we've got a lot of kids that play summer ball. Right. Like Dawson McMillan, if he plays, I think he would go to Milford if they're still in the same location because that's where both of his brothers played. And then there's a couple of... Uh, and then most of the Miller's players would probably go to Ashland. Uh, but it, it's it's all based on location, so it makes it interesting every yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll find out soon enough, right? We certainly will. We certainly Just will. Just like these election results that we hope to find out soon enough. That's right. And of course, uh, Monday, May 29th, Memorial Day. Got the Memorial, Memorial Day. Day festivities in Hopkinton. Correct. Yeah, the uh, soldiers start off. Uh, the veterans will start off at Evergreen Cemetery in Woodville. Uh, drive up to. Uh, Marshall Street Park up there, uh, the Marshall Street parking lot, which is above VMC Park, uh, I mean Kerrigan Park. And then they will march down Mayhew Street and they will hit the two cemeteries, Mount Auburn and uh, St. John's. Then they will uh, proceed to march up to the Common and they will lay wreaths at the Doughboy at the uh, Veterans Memorial Stones around the gazebo. Yep, and I don't. And they put I don't the flag think, up. Uh, it, it, I love to go. On, I love covering this Memorial Day uh, yeah. ceremony every year because it really shows you what Memorial Day is all about. Right. And you know, a lot of people, of course, they have cookouts and they have the parties, but yeah. this really shows you uh, what Memorial Day truly is about, and it's to, to honor those that have sacrificed everything for our country. Sure. And and the turnout is is fantastic between you know police and fire that participate, but you also your scouts, your Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Uh, Cub Scouts, Brownies, they all take part. Little Leaguers, soccer players, lacrosse players. <clears throat> Every group has uh, someone come in, in, and they work with the veterans um, and uh, help them with you know, laying the wreaths and so forth and uh, doing some uh, And they replace the, uh, the flags, too, as well. Uh, <coughs> yeah, the, the scouts, uh, they go and they, they replace with the veterans. Every Flag's veteran gets a new flag every year. Mm-hmm. Um, Louis Bonjot, a retired firefighter, he goes out and he uh, replaced uh, all the flags for all the deceased firefighters that are in town. Uh, he, he did that. Uh, uh, Louis, I love you. You did a great job doing that. But I was uh, lining up the event and I give him a call saying, hey, you want to do it on Sunday? And he says, I already did them all. <laughs> he says, well, that's the joys of being retired, you know. Yeah. Uh, so he was able to do them all. And uh, so the firefighters also get remembered as well. And then uh, down the road, Saturday, August 5th, the Keep Smiling for Abbey field hockey game. Field hockey game, yeah. That's taking place at the Fruit Street Fields this year, I believe. Which will be tough for us to... uh, Right. We'll certainly be there uh, in one way or the other. Yeah, news capacity about it. No way. Unless they build us a press box up high. Okay, they They can give us a sky lift. (laughs) Get us up top. They just might. Absolutely. But uh, it's always a great event, uh, the Keep Smiling for Abbey uh, field hockey event. What they do is they take community members and alumni, uh, and they'll put them up against, uh, yeah, the alumni, or they'll put them up against the uh, the parents of some of the uh, some of the players that are there to uh, honor Abbey or to uh, support this uh, the, the cause to fight anaphylaxis. So... That is in August, Saturday, August 5th, at noontime over at the Fruit Street Fields. Always a fun event. Mike, any uh, news over there? No, the only news uh, that I did get, uh, we just checked up with our webmaster. It was nice enough to report that we have over 30 viewers watching online. 30. 
That's, what That's it's cool. All about. We can't tell how many people are on TV because they don't do Nielsen's for public access. So, and for those we'll thirty viewers, I'm sure some of them are wondering what the uh, Celtic score is. Forty-seven seconds left to go in the third quarter. Celtics up by three. Nice. Maybe they were watching the Celtics games, so they got delayed counting the ballots. That's very that's very possible because uh, you know th- someone has their smartphone out and <laughs> it's easy to get distracted. Uh, oh, absolutely. They're, they're, yeah, hmm. they're all gathered watching a TV right now while, while we're waiting. So hey, <laughs> where it's gonna be hot? Where it's gonna be hot? I was thinking about some ice cream. Some great places in town to get ice cream. You got Waterfresh Farms. You got uh, uh, Yoga Beach. And just opened up last month the Spoonery. Yes. Right behind the Golden, oh, right behind the Spoon, on Lumber Street, uh, the Spoonery opened up, and they get their fantastic ice cream and a bunch of new things in there. You should check them out. They're outstanding. Yep. And uh, the weather's going to heat up, so. Uh, yeah. You definitely want that ice cream. I, th- I think the uh, the craving for ice cream will uh, certainly increase. But a lot of great community events happening all summer long. You can find all the information on our website, hcam.tv. And, of course, you can find information about all our shows as well as our weekly newscast, uh, which airs every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 and 10 p.m., what? keeping you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. Sure. Um, and, and tune into the rest of the programs. We've got the Hopkinton Coffee Break. We've got Character Matters. Right. We gotta wake up and smell the poetry. We we take that in. And, uh, and a lot of new shows were added this year. A lot of new shows were added, and which oh, oh. So every time someone walks by us, it's 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 like squirrel, you know. We're just yep. dying to stop talking and and take a little breather here. But I don't see uh, any movement happening. I'm also get the reflection. Oh, I see a lot of the reporters and a lot of the yeah. a lot of the candidates going back. Yeah, we and get the forth candidates to here. As a matter of fact, they, what's going on? I had uh, some some other town officials there texting me. Uh, that they have to go to work. And it's like, okay, I mean, take it with us on the phone. You know, it'll be there. Right. You know, follow us along. Um, right, and to watch uh, on our website live, hcam.tv slash live. That's right. You can catch us anywhere. You know, what's great about that, that's uh, one of the reasons why we love broadcasting our sporting events live. Because two reasons. One, you have uh, uh, parents of players that have siblings that they can't be at the game with that have uh, be at home for homework, boom, put it on TV. Oh, hey, dad is traveling to L.A. this week, you know, and I'm going to miss the game. No, you don't have to miss it. HCAM.TV slash live. We, we now stream both our channels, TV and Ed, uh, both streamed. So catch it live like people are doing now. Absolutely. Dirty of you. Sorry that you have I to think, listen to I, this part. I, I, I think know. people are uh, tuning in because they're just curious. What are they going to talk about next? No. No, it's not that. It's not that. I'm getting these dirty looks from John Phelps over there, and he's just, he says, I can't believe you guys are still talking. I can't either, you know? to be honest with you. I'm just, I'm just running out of things to say. I mean, let's, let's, let's see some of John's tweets. Mike, you're, you're running out of things to say? Wait a second. I thought that things was Things that impossible. I can say on TV. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. I that makes more sense. I can't go talk about your personal life on TV. <laughs> I would never do that. Please don't. <laughs> but uh, a big thank you to uh, Tom Dings who Tom, has yeah. stuck by us here. Yeah, yeah. Tom says, oh, I'll come by. Away. I'll come by. It's only going to be an hour, he says. Yeah. And Three has, hours later. He has his headphones on. I'm not sure if he's listening to us or some music. But, yeah, um, yeah he's, he's got his iPod <laughs> going over there. He's, oh, yeah. He's listening to the, the, the Doobie Brothers or something. <laughs> but, yeah, here we are just waiting patiently for but, the results. Uh, just to recap. The details about uh, this town election for those of you that don't know five contested races, go. six questions, and we're ready for the we're results. Gonna fight out. We're gonna go so without further ado, let's turn to the podium. Good evening, everyone. I have unofficial results of the annual town election May 15, 2017, for Board of Selectmen John. M. Catino, 1,236. Aman Ali Hadri, 1,216. Board of Assessors, three year. Leah Ann Batley Rafferty, 1723. Assessors, one year. Leslie Ficari, 
seventeen twenty seven Board of Health three year Elizabeth B. Whittemore seventeen twenty nine Board of Health one year Michael J. King seventeen one zero Board of Library Trustees three year June A. Harris one thousand and fifty Stanley D. Polnick seven hundred and sixteen Sue M. Curries one thousand and forty seven Margaret A. Wigan one thousand three hundred and twenty Board of Library Trustees one year Jessica Anna Marie King 1708 Cemetery Commission 3 year Claire B Wright 1704 I apologize the thousand before it was 1700 <coughs> Commissioner of Trust Funds Muriel E Kramer 1754 Constable 3 year Edward J. Mills, 1677. Constable one year, Francis J. Durso, 1601. Hopkinton Housing Authority, five year, Rebecca Hoffman, 1678. <clears throat> Parks and Recreation, three year, Laura Hansen, 1613. Amy Markovich, twelve sixty seven, <clears throat> and Christina M. Anderson, ten forty four. Planning Board, five years. Kenneth R. Weismantle, nine hundred and twenty five. Muriel Kramer, eleven forty eight. Amy Ritterbush, 1364. Gary Trendle, 1032. <clears throat> Planning Board for three years. Kelly Carp, 1702. For Planning Board, one year. Irfan Nasrula, 1253. Al Alfred W. Rogers, 945. For the school committee, Minakshi S. Broth, 1307. Jennifer A. Devlin, 1735. We do not have a current count on what the exact tally is for questions at the moment, but that is, for the, that is the unofficial count for candidates that were officially on the ballot. Thank you very much, and thank you to everyone who put forward the time and effort to run, whether you came out successful or not. Uh, we all appreciate your volunteerism. Thank you very much. All right, well, there you have it. Tom, let's, uh, let's go over here and uh, let's wrap this up. All right, sounds good. Well, the unofficial results are in. You just uh, heard them from the uh, town clerk, uh, Connor Deegan. I tried to get uh, what I could. He read them kind of fast, but I was able to get uh, a couple of the key ones uh, for selectmen. It was a difference of 20, 20 votes, votes between John Catino and Amon Hadri, right. 1236 to 1216. 20 votes. That is amazing. remarkable. What a That's close amazing. race that was for selectmen. And then... Um, with the planning board, uh, I got three of them. I'm missing the uh, last total. Uh, Wise Mantle got uh, Ken Wise Mantle got uh, 925. Muriel Kramer 1,134. Amy Ritterbush 1,654. Right, we'll get that other number. And uh, one year uh, planning board, Irfan Nasrula Bito Al Rogers 1,253 to 945. All right, so that's what I got for now. I am going to get the full results. We'll, the full we'll results. post them online tonight. It'll yep. be on our website, hcam.tv, we'll in case you them missed out, them. Put them on Facebook. Yep. 
but uh, it's it was quite a race this year, <laughs> so close, and, and so many of these uh, contested races, especially that 20 uh, vote difference in the Selectna race, right. it's just unbelievable. Uh, might be one of the closest races in uh, Hopkinton history, but in any case, we'll have the results up tonight, right. hcam.tv. Yeah. But I think it's time to wrap it up tonight. Definitely time to wrap it up. I gotta get this. Uh, it's past my bedtime. We, we gotta go. Uh, gotta wa- go. We gotta go watch the rest of the Celtics. Gotta go watch that game. So, Tom, thanks very much. I appreciate it. It's coming been out. fun, Mike. It's, it's been, been fun. It's been fun as always. Thanks for coming out. Absolutely. And uh, we'd like to thank you for tuning in and watching. For Tom Nappy, I'm Mike Tarosha. Tom Dings behind the controls. Thank you, and have a good night.